it's time to take a look at the cooling system of the Europa. What you can see here are the original uh, coolant transfer tubes that run from the rear of the car where the engine is with a water pump right through the chassis to the front of the car where the radiator is. These are the originals. Um, they're mild steel and they used to be painted black but they're completely rusted out. There are holes from the beginning right till the end so these need to be replaced. You can buy some stainless coolant transfer tubes off the shelf but I want to make my own and I want to make mine out of aluminium so what I started with was uh, 6 meters of aluminium tubing this is 32 millimeter outer diameter with a wall thickness of 1.5 millimeters so it's the same outer diameter as the originals uh, but of course it's a lot lighter I used the originals as a template to uh, know what bands I would need so I could uh, order every part and then mock it up so um, what I've done is I've cut all the aluminium pieces that I needed and I've mocked it up into the chassis to make sure everything would fit so I'll take the camera to the chassis so I can show you what I've been up to so this is the mock-up of all the coolant tubes in the engine bay um, the front half of the coolant tubes are just two straight lengths going from the front of the chassis where the radiator is right until this point just two straight lengths of aluminium tubing from this point back it's a bit of a different story I chose not to go with uh, mandrel bands but with some silicon hoses and short lengths of straight aluminium tubing that was a bit easier that also has some advantages that I can disassemble the rear coolant tubes if I need to uh, I can also make some changes if I need to in the future Another advantage is that this has a little bit of flex, so uh, it, the aluminium will not fatigue. The silicon hose that I started with was a Europa specific kit that I got from Europa Engineering. So these three pieces and the two pieces that run from the front of the coolant tubes to the radiator was one kit of five different hoses. Then I added some universal uh, silicon hoses from Viper Performance. Um, there are four in total. I'll quickly run you through the coolant circuit and then I'll disassemble everything so I can all show you all the parts individually. So we'll start at the water pump, then through this 90 degree hose that was in the kit, that's a reducer from the water pump to this 32 millimeter diameter tube. This is a short straight section with a bracket welded on that can bolt to the chassis. Then we go to a 90 degree silicon hose and an aluminium tube that runs from here to here alongside this chassis leg. We're going to uh, the bottom tube, through the chassis, to the radiator, then back to the top tube. There are two hoses here that run it up. Uh, I made a white bird around the uh, exhaust and intake manifold to try not to get uh, as much heat through the coolant tubes and also trying to avoid uh, the firewall on the inside of the engine bay. Then we're running to the homemade coolant tank and then back to the water pump. So I've disassembled everything, uh, taken it out of the engine bay and laid it out here. You can see most of them are just uh, straight pieces of tubing um, with the silicon hoses. This one is a bit special. It's also just a straight piece but it has an aluminium bracket weld to it that can bolt to the chassis. Of course, uh, the coolant tank that I made earlier. So these are all the pieces. What I'm going to do now is to put a bead on the end of all the straight tubes. This is one of the shorter aluminium tubes, so uh, it's easy for me to show you how to do this on a short tube. This is a tube beater that I bought off of eBay. Um, it's made by a guy in England, but it was relatively cheap, so I'll quickly demonstrate how to use it. I'll take a little bit of oil. Put it on the rollers. Insert the tube. You 
can't tighten the top one too much. I have to do it really slow. Quite a nice bead. Takes a bit of time, but uh, it will prevent the hoses from slipping off. I beaded and polished all of the tubes, including the larger ones. As you can see, they're completely polished. Um, they will be inside of the backbone chassis, so you won't see them, but I will know. So they're all nice and shiny. Um, the beading will prevent the hoses from slipping off. Um, they're a little bit dirty from lying around the workshop, but I still need to clean them. The only thing that I need to do is order some stainless hose clamps, so they won't uh, rust. You can see the old dirty and rusty coolant tubes here and they'll find their way to a corner of the workshop. Um, I'll keep them as a reminder and these will be packaged up um, for when they'll be ready to use. We've come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can also visit my blog um, to take a look at uh, some of the pictures that I take or any of the other videos. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. And I hope I see you next time. Goodbye.